Hi guys, welcome to Sons of Cain. On this episode, we're going to go for the flows again. Uh, we're going to change it up and we're going to do changing grips. If you haven't seen the videos before, we're going to put a little link up top. Um, this is all about changing that flow dynamic that we had before, but we're changing how we hold the cane. So what we're looking at is having the cane in one hand or one specific grip, and as you change the hand grip, change the position of the cane, it will change the technique. So what we're looking at aiming to show you how to do is transfer from one to the other in a nice flow and easy action. Right, hi guys, this is just a short video on changing how you hold the cane. As we've done in previous videos, where you hold the cane, how you grip it will change your technique. And you might go from one strike, say a bayonet strike, and then the thing you want to do next you can't do because you have to do a big hand change. So we're going to look at this. Normally when I hold the cane I'm walking, I hold it in the middle of the shaft, down by my side, almost like a swagger stick. Or I hold it as a walking aid with the crook pointing forward. From that I can do my swings. We've done a horn change, so if I want the horn to be facing the other way, We've done a video, nice and straightforward, but what if we come up? So if I'm holding it down on the floor, crook, crook pointing back, and I haven't got time to do a horn change, what I do is just flick it on the floor. All I've done is push my hand to the rear of the crook towards the shaft, and then it just rotates in my palm. So I haven't had to lift it off the ground and do a physical horn change. It's just pushing your hand forward, and as you turn it, the grip changes, so it's facing the other way. So you might think this is going to need a clearance swing, or if it's this way, you might think I need to bring that up and do a poke. So it all depends on the action that you're doing. My favourite technique, I've said it before, I'll say it again, figure of eight. But what if I want to change? So we are looking at grabbing the cane. So I've flicked it round, grabbed it mid shaft with my left hand. I can then change my grip to whatever it is I decide to do. If I'm this way round, so both my palms are down, my knuckles are up, my thumbs are pointing each other, which we would use for blocking. This is really good for a close in strike. So if somebody's really close, I can grab it and I can do a short, sharp bayonet strike. If I need the extension, because of the position of my wrist, it won't go. So as I'm bringing this up, my palm rotates on the cane, always keeping contact, and I can change my grip, and I've got that extension. So from the side, that's the limit of my extension with the wrong grip, but good for close-in work. If I change, so I'm just rotating my palm, you can see how much more of an extension I've got. Simple ones, bring in the cane, use your fingers, pop the cane up, so from the base position, flip up to the mid shaft. So we've got a mid shaft grip. When I'm standing and talking to people, I've got this habit of grabbing the cane, and I just twirl it in my hands, so I'm going from my left hand, straight away, so I've changed grip, but it's a flow. Sometimes I'll sit there, I'll actually just flick it in the air and grab it, I wouldn't recommend it in a combat situation, or if I'm holding it by the tip end, I'll roll it over my palm so it comes towards the crook end. These take practice, but what it will do, if I'm doing something and I decide I want to change my grip, say from here, I've got the poke, I then flick it up back, I grab the tip end with my left hand, and I can come round and do a crook strike, hook on, and do my technique. So rather than just sticking with one grip, practice flowing, from one grip to another for the different basic techniques. Try twirling it, you'll be surprised. Go from one hand to the other, you'll get a lot of techniques in there. Just rotating over the hand. The other thing this does, though it may not appear practical, it gives you greater confidence with the cane and it gives you more to think about when you're thinking about your techniques, about transferring. Somebody may grab your left hand or your right hand with the cane in Rather than trying to fumble with a release, because one of the things we'll be looking at later is 
when you get that pressure situation, you will get that adrenaline dump, your fine motor skills were gone, so you might not be able to do a fancy wrist lock or grab, so you need to do a big brutal movement. So this will come into that later on. As Chris has just shown you, it can move all these grips around and use two hands. But my second hand is always at contact with the floor. So I've got my tripod. If you haven't seen the tripod before, it's basically making the triangle, the cane, and your two feet. And you can change that, one foot goes back, the cane comes back. My wife always says she knows that when I sense danger, I'm forever changing the way my horn faces on my hand that I'm going to use for combat. So as Chris said, hand comes down, fingers split the cane, twirl the cane, come back up and grab. I prefer this position because where Chris can actually come up quickly for the strike by either using his foot to kick up, if you haven't seen the video we'll put a link up there about the kick up video. With me, just by raising my hand slightly and bringing my thumb back to me, it gives you that motion, which is quite fast, which is a great strike for the groin. Chris uses two hands to come through and change. I tend to use just the one hand. I've got my base going. If I want to grab, I can lower my hand down, release my grip. My hand there goes to the tip, crooks facing backwards, bring it back up for a strike, in for a grab. So from the side way, I just, that motion. You're very limited with two canes, especially when you're walking. If you've got a mobility problem and you use one cane for walking, look at the scenario. You may be next to a wall, a fence, a chair, something you can hold on to. It gives you that second cane. So you're anchoring now, you've got your base, and then you start dealing with your opponent. Okay, back in my chair, I've got the large cane. A lot easier to actually use now. So I can, again, reverse grip, cane's in the right hand, my hand's at the top of the shaft, horn's facing forward. I can pop up, strike through with the crook end. This is now an extended grip. I can then grab hold of and pull in. Other hand comes back to the tip, hand can uh, go straight up, thumb into carotid, I've got total control. Now, as Chris was saying about going from one hand to the other, I don't have any distance, so as the, the cane comes up, I just cross my arms. So, from the floor, it's almost like a fan block. So the cane's travelling, sort of left to right, or clockwise for me, and clockwise for you guys. It goes from the 6 o'clock position on the floor, as it comes up to the 12 o'clock, my left hand's coming out underneath my right hand. I've now taken the cane to the 3 o'clock position, Left hand grabs the shaft midway and I've changed position by letting go of the right hand. This works well. The punch is coming in, fan block, underneath, reverse the crook, into a strike, into another strike. We'll be looking at a lot more of these with a figure eight extended video, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, I've changed back to the mini cane now. As I've said before, the mini cane is really, really good in the chair. The only problem I've got is this is a very light cane. I am working on getting a heavier cane, and I've got no ferrule at the top. But we're looking at the same principles. If it's between my legs like it normally is when I'm wheeling myself around town, left hand onto the crook, horns facing my left hand side, shaft is between my legs. It's a pop up to grab it. I've now got the strikes with the crook, which is great for the strike, locate, pull in, deal with. You can do the fan block that I did before, but you've got shorter area, it's going to be tighter to come through. And to be honest, this is such an easy cane to start twiddling about and changing. You don't really need to do that, that sort of manoeuvre. Um, my son's a drummer. Hi James. And they twiddle drumsticks. I don't know if you've ever seen it. And basically, it's like that coin trick where the coin goes between the fingers. And all you do is use your fingers to twist. Flashy. As Chris says, 
you've got an attacker, massive adrenaline engines on, done. First thing you do is this. Keep it simple. Thanks for watching guys, we hope you like this video. As you can see, just by changing the angle, changing your grip, it opens up all these techniques. As we go through the series, a lot more will be shown. Uh, we get a lot of comments about how they could extend the video. We love this, we love the way the community is working now. But remember guys, we start at the beginning and we work our way through. If you haven't already, give us a thumbs up, drop us a line down below in the comments box. As always, if you haven't done already, please subscribe. Don't forget caring and sharing. Ring the bell, free the fear.